And this morning, Metro Police are also busy with an investigation after a bomb threat was emailed to staff at Metro High Schools. This morning, police were searching Hume Fogg Academic Magnet High School on Broadway. Yesterday morning, police tell us three similar threats were called in to three other Metro High Schools. Those schools were searched before students arrived and the threats were not credible. Police are looking for who may be responsible for sending those emails. A disturbing story developing on Vanderbilt's campus after swastikas were painted inside a Jewish fraternity house. According to the campus paper, two swastikas were found on an elevator inside that elevator and on the basement door of the Alpha Phi Epsilon house early Saturday morning. The offensive graffiti has since been cleaned up. Vanderbilt uh, newspapers have written about uh, saying that they are working with police and the university to find out who is responsible. And it took nearly two weeks, but a woman accused of carjacking and robbing two people who offered to help her is now behind bars. Cuthbert Langley at Metro, uh, at the Metro Jail this morning for so Cuthbert, it took a while for officers to track this woman down. It did, Amy. It took close to two weeks. Police say they had trouble finding where the stolen car was. Once they did find that vehicle, though, they were able to tie it to the suspect at the center of all of this. We're talking about 19-year-old Precious Horton. Let's take a look at her mugshot that's just into our newsroom this morning. Police say back on March 1st at Rivergate Mall, a friend offered to give her a ride. During that ride, as they were driving from the Target to the Books a Million, that's when police say Horton pulled out a gun, pointed it at the driver and another passenger in the car. During that ride, she also demanded $1,000, according to police, and also wanted to steal the car. The passenger in the car was able to give Horton some money before escaping from the situation. Once, though, they pulled up to the books a million, that's when police say Horton told the victim to get out of the car. Horton drove off and had not been seen until yesterday afternoon. So once police were able to find the stolen car, they were able to easily tie Horton to that car. When they went to talk to her all about it, not only did the 19-year-old admit to doing everything, police say they also found some of the stolen equipment from that car as well. So they brought her here to the Metro Jail where she sits this morning. She's facing three serious charges of, of car theft, aggravated robbery, and theft as well. Her bond has been set at $110,000. We're live at the Metro Jail this morning. I'm Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. Thank you, Cuthbert. Police need your help locating this man. John Jeff Hicks is wanted in connection to a shooting that happened overnight on Saturday. He is suspected of shooting a 16-year-old at King's Crest Apartments in Smyrna. Anyone with information on Hicks is urged to contact the Smyrna Police Department at 615-459-6644. And an accused shooter is still on the run this morning after he shot a man near his home on Saturday. It happened in Murfreesboro at the intersection of South Rutherford and Mercury Boulevard. The victim, Nicholas Parks, had to be taken to St. Thomas Rutherford Hospital. He was able to give a very limited description of his attacker before he was airlifted to or transferred rather to Vanderbilt. And new this morning, a man beaten and left bleeding on the side of the street. And today, the suspected attacker will face a judge. According to the Kentucky New Era, Anthony Mack and another man got into a fight on Boxwood Drive in Hopkinsville Sunday night. Police say Mack beat the other man so severely. He was taken to the hospital with several broken bones. Mack is now charged with second degree assault. And in Gallatin, this man, Brian Kirkham, is behind bars. Police say he's also known as Uncle Brian, and he's accused of luring a 15-year-old girl into his home with sexual messages. The 53-year-old faces three counts of solicitation of a minor. He's out on bond right now. And we have some new information on an investigation into a mysterious device found on a vehicle in Robertson County. Greenbrier police say this is a homemade GPS tracking device, not a bomb like they had originally thought. It was taped to the side of a six volt battery and wires were sticking out of it. Donald Johnson found it underneath his car while changing his tire and of course thinking it could be some kind of explosive device called police. Police arrived at his Church Street home around 5.30 Saturday evening to investigate. Nearby homes were evacuated for a few hours. Police are still trying to figure out who put the item on the vehicle and why. We want to try to solve a lot of it as much as we can, uh, at least to give this man, the, the victim, some satisfaction that you know, somebody's not actually after me or trying to track me. Police encourage anyone with information on this device to give them a call at 
4467. And it's a case of extortion that involves a grandmother and her granddaughter. The suspect faked her own kidnapping and then asked her grandmother to pay up the phony ransom. Columbia police say the woman texted her family saying she was being held by a man against her will and even sent a photo of a knife held to her throat. The text also indicated if the kidnapper didn't receive the money by a certain time, the woman would be tortured and killed. But police say Emily Jo Atchison wasn't in danger at all. When investigators intercepted the cash, they found Emily unharmed. She admitted it was all a lie and that she needed the fake ransom because she owed someone else money. Atchison is charged with extortion and false reporting. All right, so check out these images from a high speed chase in Christian County, Kentucky. It happened back in February after authorities tried to pull over Charles Daniel. You can see the amount of drugs found in the car and, and money and some other items. Daniel was in court yesterday and told the judge Andrew Self right there that he panicked because the, he was high and that's why he started the chase. Suspect said he didn't want to go back to jail because the drugs had already cost him his job, wife and family. He is facing a slew of charges, including first, second and third degree drug trafficking charges and DUI. The judge is supposed to decide his fate Thursday at 830 in the morning. All right, new this morning, tragedy strikes a funeral procession after a semi hits five cars, including the hearse. It happened in Hopkinsville and Canton Pike and single tree drive. The Kentucky New Era reports two people were hurt in that wreck, but police say they are not believed to be life threatening injuries. The funeral home was handling the arrangements of Lanny Jordan at the time. According to the managing partner of the home, the burial went on as planned after the wreck. This morning, we now know the identity of the motorcyclist killed on the interstate Sunday evening. Fort Campbell soldier Charles Pusateri is believed to have been returning to Fort Campbell when he was killed on I-24 west of Old Hickory Boulevard. Witnesses report that he was driving very fast when he attempted a lane change and struck the rear of a pickup truck. The pickup truck received minor damage, as did a Ford SUV that was struck by debris from the motorcycle. And yesterday, another accident involving a motorcycle in Clarksville. This one on Highway 76 near Belshire Drive. That's just about five miles away from a fatal accident on Highway 70 that happened Sunday night. Police say a motorcycle and a vehicle collided around four in the afternoon. Two people riding the motorcycle had to be taken by life flight to Vanderbilt. The driver of the car had no injuries. Police are still investigating. As soon as we get more details, we will be sure to pass them along to you. And with all the motorcycle crashes and accidents within the last two days, police are asking drivers to be especially aware when driving. With these warmer temps, they say there are going to be more bikers on the road, and they ask drivers to look twice before turning and also allow motorcyclists more distance than you would a regular car. And in case you didn't know, today is St. Patrick's Day. And for many, that means going to a bar or a restaurant for that classic green beer. Remember, if you plan on drinking, designate a sober driver. The Tennessee Highway Patrol will be out on increased patrols during the St. Patrick's Day holiday. If you need help getting a safe ride home, AAA and Bud Light's Tow to Go program can help. You don't even have to be a AAA member. Just call their 855 number and a driver will take you and your car to a safe place within 10 miles. It is free and confidential.